I'm going to take a few minutes today to talk about an odd concept called the quantum probability current. Uh, really what I want to talk about is scattering. I want to talk about systems where you throw particles in at some system and some of them will pass through, some will bounce off, and you want to figure out how they bounce off, what their scattering is from that system. To be able to talk about that, I need this concept of the quantum probability current to do it rigorously. So I want to take a couple of minutes just to introduce this idea, to give you the idea of it. And the starting point for talking about the quantum probability current is one of the core ideas of quantum mechanics, the idea of a normalized state, a normalized wave function. As you probably know, if you have some quantum wave function, psi of x and t, it has to be normalized in the sense that when you take the absolute square of psi, you integrate that over all space, minus infinity to infinity in one dimension, it has to add up to one. We know what this means, right? Conceptually, psi squared, the absolute square of psi, is the probability that your particle is at any given point. Probability density, technically, but you have probability that it's any given point x, and that is, when you add it all up, the total probability has to be one. It makes sense. Uh, that has to be true for all time, so even as our wave function changes with time and evolves in funny ways, the total has to still be one at the end. And I'm going to claim that we can think of this as a sort of conservation of probability idea, that no matter how the system changes, the total probability has to be the same, has to be one. Uh, the analogy I'm drawing here is to uh, electric charge, among other things. The analogy is that the total electric charge in some system, uh, Q total, in general, we can write that as an integral over all space of the charge density rho, d3x, so integral over all the volume of space, and this has to be constant in time. It has to be unchanging as time changes. Uh, this is for uh, rho is the charge density. And so this is the idea that if the total charge is constant in time, that's conservation of charge. Total probability is constant in time, that's conservation of probability. So far, this isn't all that exciting. There's nothing deep, really deep about this. Uh, but what I want to do is say, well, this Q total, this is a global statement, where by global I mean you have to add up over all space, the whole universe, to make sense of this statement. Sometimes we want to talk about conservation of charge point by point, like saying, at this point, is charge conserved? What does it mean for charge to be conserved at this point? And there, in that case, the local version of charge conservation makes a lot of sense. There's the local, uh, misspelling the word local, local version. Local meaning uh, it doesn't have to connect distant points. Uh, you don't have to look at distant points. You can look just at one place. The local version of charge conservation says this. It says that the rate of change, partial derivative of rho with respect to t, rate of change of the charge density at a given point is equal to minus the divergence of the current density. Let me write down here, remember j vector is our current density, electric current density, uh, that's in like amps per meter squared in SI units. And what this equation is saying, it, it actually is a, a pretty straightforward equation on some level. What this equation is saying is that if I have the charge density at some point here, if I'm looking at the charge density rho the, at that point, and then I have electric current that's flowing away from that region, if this is my J flowing away from that region, then the divergence of J is positive at that point. That's what divergence mean. it's means, divergence, del dot j, is the spread outiness of a vector field. So if the current density is flowing away from that point on, on the whole, then that means this is a positive divergence, so this is a negative on the right-hand side, and that means that the charge density is decreasing. That makes sense, right? If the current is flowing more away than toward our point, then clearly the charge at that point must be decreasing. It must be becoming less positive as current flows away. This is the local version of, char of charge conservation. So what I want to do is to find something similar for probability. And what would that mean? Well, the probability density is psi squared. So if I want the local version of this, if I want the local version, I want to write down something about the probability density changing with time. 
So that's going to say d psi squared dt. That's the equivalent of change, you know, rate of change of density. So that's the rate of change of the probability at being a given point at a given point. And that has to be equal to, and here we just have to say it's supposed to be that same form, the divergence of some j vector, some vector little j, where j is the quantum probability current. Uh, and figuring out what that is and deriving it is kind of a pain. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole derivation here because that's boring. You can look it up in a book. Basically, psi squared is psi star psi, and you'll do the product rule of this time derivative, and you'll get those things, and d psi dt, you can throw uh, Schrodinger's equation at it, and get some things, get some terms. Oh my goodness, I have an alarm going on. I apologize. Um, the, uh, we, we throw Schrodinger's equation at it. What we find is that our quantum probability current, j, is going to be defined as, to, to make this equation work, to make this work using Schrodinger's equation, j vector has to be, uh, get my factors right out front, h bar over 2m i, imaginary unit, and then inside the parentheses, we're going to have psi star, our, our wave function complex conjugate, times the gradient of psi, minus psi times the gradient of psi star. That is the quantum probability current right there. Uh, that's the idea. Or in one dimension, or in 1D, if we want a simple case, Jx is equal to h bar over 2mi times psi star d psi dx minus psi d psi star dx. And that's our, this is our quantum probability current. Uh, interpreting this is a little weird. I, it, it's, a, it's a strange expression, right? But yeah. you can derive it from Schrodinger's equation if you just take the, this derivative. And you'll find this is true. You can, you can work out that this is true. Uh, so what's this mean, anyway? What's this telling us? This, once you work out what this equation is, this is telling you how probability is moving from one place to another, how the probable location of your particle is moving from one place to another as, you, uh, as, as time passes. And so to understand this, to really make sense of it, the best thing we can do is just apply it to a, to a common case or two. And maybe the simplest case to consider, our simplest example, is a momentum state. Momentum states. And to look at a momentum state, you can remember, maybe you've studied this, we've studied it in my class, uh, a momentum state might be for momentum P, psi P of X, or in other words, the X bra with the P cat, if you want to think about this in bracket language, uh, this state we saw was, I'm going to use just some arbitrary normalization, not a specific normalization, Ar arbitrary normalization constant times e to the i px times x over h bar. There we go. That, that's, our, that's our standard momentum state that we might write down. And so if that's my state, I know that up here, if I'm looking in one dimension, I know up here I'm going to need some x derivatives, some partials with respect to x. So that tells me that d psi p dx is going to be, looking, uh, looking at this function, it's going to be a times i px over h bar times the same exponential, e to the i px x over h bar. There's my derivative, my, my derivative of this. And of course, the complex conjugates of psi or of, of d psi dx will just be the complex conjugates of these terms. So with that in mind, I can come over and I can plug this into my jx. I can see what I come up with. What I'm going to find is that jx will equal, for this example, it will equal h bar over 2mi times psi star is this thing, so a star times e to the minus i pxx over h bar times d psi dx, d psi p dx. Um, that's plugging in here. This idea x gives me a times i momentum over h bar times e to the i p 
px x over h bar. That's my first term from this. And then I'll subtract the other order. Right? I'll subtract psi times d psi star dx. Same thing. So psi here is a times e to the i px x over h bar times, that's my psi, now d psi star dx, the complex conjugate of this, a star times i px over h bar has to be complex conjugated. So minus i px over h bar times e to the, again, complex conjugate, minus i px x over h bar. Whew. Again, these calculations are a little ugly. They're kind, of, they're kind of a mess. But when I look at this, this simplifies nicely because these two terms, the exponential terms, now that I've taken my derivative, those will cancel out. If I, when I multiply the exponentials, I add the exponents, and those just are opposite each other, so they cancel out. Same down here, those exponentials will cancel out. And for that matter, I can look and see I've got a minus a minus here, so that becomes a plus. And at this point, I can simplify this. I can simplify it down. This is equal to h bar over 2mi times, what's inside my parentheses? I've got an a star a is the absolute square of, that's a squared really, absolute square of a times i px over h bar plus, second line, same thing, absolute square of a, a star a uh, times i px over h bar. And putting that together, and again, I can look at some things that simplify. My h bar here is going to cancel with those two h bars. My i in the denominator will cancel out with those two i's. There's distributing those through. And what am I left with? I'm left with, even the 2 is going to cancel out, right? Because I've got two identical terms. I'm left with px over m times a squared. So for a momentum state with normalization a, if I just choose that as an example to look at, I get a probability current that says, hey, my x component of my probability current is just the x momentum divided by m. That's actually just velocity. This is vx times a squared. So what's this telling me? It's saying, yeah, whatever my pro that a squared, whatever that normalization factor was, it's moving in the plus x direction at speed vx, at velocity vx. Or if this is a negative velocity, we get a negative a squared, a negative number times a squared in this. So jx is just reflecting, for a momentum state, it's just reflecting that flow. That's one of the classic examples of how we use probability current, uh, or probability, you know, how this shows up. It, the most common place we'll see it is when we have just a pure momentum state traveling through space. This is how it's going to work. This is what we're going to see coming out of these things. Uh, the other result I should mention as a, as a fixed result to look at is what if what if psi of x and t is a real function where psi star equals psi. If psi star equals psi, if it's a real value function, so for example, the classic example here is if your psi of x is equal to, call it, b e to the minus qx or something, the exponential decay that we often see in quantum systems. If I have that, this is a pure real number. There's no e to the ikx or anything here. Pure real number. So what happens in this case? Well, here, if it's a real number, look at this a second. If psi star equals psi, then j is equal to whatever, h bar over 2mi times psi star equals psi, remember. So this is psi gradient of psi minus psi gradient of psi, which is just zero. So there, anytime you have a purely real valued psi, wave function psi, you have no flow of quantum probability current at all. There's no flowing probability. That's just fixed wherever it is. It's not, nothing's changing there. So those are the pieces that I look at. Those are the pieces, those are the, so the two classic examples and the ones that come up most often in basic scattering problems. These are the examples of how probability current functions in quantum mechanics. And we'll use this eventually to talk about scattering. But for now, it's sort of just an interesting idea. You can track how much the probability of the particle being here or there or somewhere else is shifting, sorry, 
how, you can track how much that's shifting purely by looking at this probability current and seeing how that flows from place to place.